Michael Hollingsworth, a lifelong Brooklynite, resident of the Crown Heights. I'm a member of the Crown Heights Tenant Union and the Central Brooklyn DSA. And I'm also a proud ally of MTOP and FLAT. Last year, after decades of backroom deals between big real estate and DCP, the people of New York City said enough. We overwhelmingly voted to change the way DCP disseminates information about rezonings to communities. And less than two months into effect, DCP has already broken that law. As they work with hideous developers on, the, on their project for 960 Franklin Avenue. The monster. The monster, as we call it. And that's why we filed this Article 78 today, to let the political appointees at DCP know that we're watching them. I'm running for city council to change a lot of things. 
But at the top of that list is how we make decisions on rezoning. But I also know that a city council member is not enough. We're going to need a mayor who is uncorrupted by real estate money. And who has, yeah, definitely not Eric Adams. And, um, uh, shots fired. And, um, so we're going to need a mayor who is going to have the courage to appoint heads of agencies like DCP who also aren't corrupted by real estate. No if you walk along Fulton Avenue and you look up, all you see are skyscrapers, right? This used to be an area that had black and brown businesses, and they're all gone now. People who supported Bloomberg's rezoning of downtown were foolish enough to believe what happened here, and downtown would stay here. But that's not the way developers work. Their hands reach into every neighborhood including mine in Southern Crown Heights, where we're going to fight against the monster at 960 Franklin Avenue. Yes. All across, the neighbor, all across the neighborhoods in New York City, the people are rejecting these racist rezonings. Inwood, Bushwick, Sunnyside Yards, Long Island City, Industry City, Gowanus, all over. We are fighting back. Because we know nothing for us without us is for us. In, 20, in 2022, when I'm a member of city council, with, with Anthony and Emily, we are going to put an end to the era of racist rezoning. And finally, the residents of District 35 and every other district in this city will have a say in what happens in our neighborhoods. Thank you. so many 
many people supporting us. The next person that I want to talk to, to um, give you to is another person who's also running for city council. He is an ally of ours, and I probably don't need to um, even introduce you. You guys already know him, Anthony Bedford. Yeah. How y'all feeling right now? Oh, yes, yes. I'd like to thank Alicia, you know, and organizations for inviting me here today, you know, because not only am I a city council candidate for the 45th district, but I'm also the president of Black Lives Matter Brooklyn. So when we talk about the injustices, that literally is across the lane that we all walk on, and we cannot allow that to continue. See, the city planning, they feel that they can get away with these things. Because there's no accountability whatsoever. Right. Right. Think above the law. Because many of our electeds are in bed with Red Meat, right. which is the real estate board of New York. Right. Many of our electeds right. are in bed with the developers who are building these monsters in our communities. Yes. The same developers who are trying to basically drown out the sunlight from the garden yes. and from our community members. Yes. But see, if we're going to talk about things like climate change, social justice, and everything else like that, this issue falls underneath that whole platform. Yes. And we cannot allow it to continue. No, no. City planning literally is violating the law. And just because they're, they're appointed by electeds does not mean to get away with it. We can't have electeds getting on TV every day saying, oh, you know, we're against 45, the orange man, but yet they're doing the same thing in our backyard. So when we go for one, we got to go for all. If anything is going to be built, it's going to be built by the community saying yes. so. Yes. And it's our community. Yes. These are our lands. Yes. This is our homes. Yes. These are our community members, and we're going to make sure we get them justice. Yes. Now, as a city council member, and I'm going to say projected, I'm, I'm calling it and claiming it now, yes. as the next city council member of District 45, yes. I'm going to work along with Michael and with Emily and with many of our other future colleagues to make sure we bring accountability to this city, to make sure that these developers do understand that they no longer run around in our communities with impunity, to make sure they understand that they will not be coming around here and just building monsters and leaving the people to suffer. That's right. No longer. No longer. Enough is enough. No. Enough, is enough. Enough, is enough. Enough, is enough. enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And I want y'all to take that to heart because when we talk about community, we're very serious about it. That's right. Very serious. This is our homes that we're looking at. Our community that we have to lead for our future generations. That's right. The fight that we're fighting today is not just for us. Right. It's for the future generations. That's right. We talk about need, the need of intergenerational wealth yes. when we need intergenerational land ownership of the people, yeah. by the people, for the community. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, you know, the reason why I'm bringing up these potential candidates it's because it's really important, because it's the city council who's going to be voting on these rezoning. They have the power. One vote can determine whether or not our public green space will be destroyed or not. One vote, one council person. So it's important that we are supporting council people who are fighting for the people, because they tend to be the best council people when they get into office. They have a proven record of being accountable to the community. Just like Manchata. Um, did I say that right? Manchaka. He's running for mayor. And he stood with his community and did not agree to a rezoning. After eight years of pressure, he was a political activist before he became the city council person. This is the people that we have to be supporting, the ones who have proven record of supporting and fighting for us. And so I'm going to introduce you to the next person. She comes from Queens, and she's been fighting that rezoning over in Queens. 
And she's also <laughs> writing for City Council. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. I have just what? Hello. Thank you, Alicia, and thank you guys for outing me. I wasn't really, <laughs> I haven't told many people yet, but I, yes, I'm running for city council in District 26. And, and I am tired of the corruption. I'm so tired. And I came here today. Uh, we signed on to Alicia's lawsuit and LaShawn's lawsuit, and thank you guys so much. You guys have been awesome. You have your lawsuit going um, that, like she said, tells, holds DCP's feet to the fire. Hopefully this is a law or a rule that we voted on, a charter change. Uh, they should be listening to the people. Right now in Sunnyside, we have the 11th worst evictor landlord coming, trying to come into our neighborhood to be rezoned. And boo! boo. And thanks to Alicia, she, you know, she gave me a heads up with her lawsuit. It's like, well, I can't really find much information about what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, my uh, CB2 board member, or the chair, doesn't seem to know that she has to give notice. And our city council person doesn't know much. And I haven't read about it in the paper, and I look online, I can't find much information. And I don't really think that's notice for a, a whole change of uh, neighborhood, for the worst evictor to come into your neighborhood and you know this guy is terrible he worked on kips bay he changed mitchell llama housing to affordable uh, to market rate um he uh, he's working in the bronx right now uh in his affordable housing that he was given a do you know he bought it for a dollar from each uh the housing department and he um it's bad so to think that he he tried to come back in two 2016 he tried to come into our neighborhood and people said, no, we don't want him. He's a bad landlord. He has, a, he has a, the biggest housing development for affordable housing right across the street from where he wants to develop. And those people said, no, he's terrible. But for some reason, like he's coming around again, and our city council member's like, huh, maybe he's okay this time. I'm like, no. Boo. Boo. And he's, he's pretending like the affordable housing is more. We know that's not true. Um, anyway, so thank you, Alicia. Your lawsuit is going to pave the way for me and our neighborhood to say you need to give us some more notice before you start coming into our neighborhoods and rezoning with your racist rezonings. So thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Okay, now you heard from the candidates. Now you're going to hear from the actors. <laughs> We've had, and the activists, excuse me, they're candidates and activists, exactly, and I think that that is the point. Woo! They are activists first, candidates second, and we hope to make them city council people in 2020. One, 2021. So it's really important. But we have a longtime ally in our lawsuit. What we did is we looked all across New York City and we got our allies to write affidavits of support, and we call them the voices of the city. Because as we stated before, this rezoning is not only going to affect our case, but it's going to affect every other case yes. in New York City. Exactly. Yes. And so we had the voices of so many different allies, and this is one of our voices. Sandy Raven. Yeah. 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 Sandy Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Strong. Am I Sandy? You gotta press, you gotta press that. Press this and talk into this. Yes. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, gray hair has its privileges. I'm gonna be as cranky as I feel right now. Yeah. So my name is Sandy Rayburn. I am part of the Preserve Our Brooklyn Neighborhoods as well as the Friends of Fort Green Park. Yeah. Yeah. We've been there and done that with the city agencies that want to steamroll our communities, top down, taking over of our backyards, of our green spaces, of our democratic predispositions. And I don't call Marissa Lago in the Department of City Planning, the Department of City Planning, I call it the Department of Rezoning. Yeah. 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 The 
maneuvers that have gone on on behalf of real estate development who obviously have paid to play, whether it's city council members or you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours with community boards, with our borough presidents, with our presidents, borough presidents, um, is something that must stop. We need to what, get woke.
like to shut someone down and then y'all turn on the horn. You got something too. Vice President.